Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add backdrop to your Android apps. So, first thing first, what is backdrop and when to use it? So, backdrop is like you have certain options which is hidden behind the foreground layer, and when you tap on an icon or say on a button, then you reveal those options. For example, now here is a screen where you can see backdrop sample is the title. Beside that title, there is an icon, and then there is some content, which is having a flower image and the details about that flower. Now, what happens when I click on the menu icon? So, as soon as I tap on it, I show certain options. These options are hidden behind the foreground layer. So, backdrop functionality you can think as if you have two layers: one is foreground, and another one is the background. And foreground layer slides up to the top. And when you tap on an icon, it slides down to show and reveal the options which is hidden behind the foreground layer. So let's see how do we can add this all using motion layout. Okay, now let's switch to the activity main XML. So here we have all the views. There's no toolbar, no coordinate layout. Whatever you have seen, it's all done through the normal views and which are there inside the motion layer. So initially we have the text view which is having the title on top, the background sample. Beside text view there is a, an icon. Now this is acting as if it's a menu icon. And when I tap on it, you see various options. These three options are nothing but the chips, which are aligned horizontally using flow. Finally, because this works with the foreground layer and the background layer. So background layer could be straightforward. Motion layout, you can set the background and it could act like a background layer. But how to make a foreground layer? So rather than creating a new hierarchy for this, what do I'm going to do here is that I'm going to take a view which is having a background as a rounded shape background and the color is white color. And to this view, I'm attaching all this image view and the text view. So like you can see this image view is having top to the top of this view. So as soon as this views is coming down, all the views associated with it will also come down. And as it goes up, all views along with it will go up. So by this way, it gives a feeling as if there's a foreground layer which is sliding up and down. After this view, we have this image view, which is the flower here, then the title. And because this content could be huge, so it is the part of the scroll view. So that's it for the XML part. Now, how do we are animating this? And how do it is sliding down and sliding up? And not just this, when I'm sliding it down, you can see the image. The image was having a full width and the height was quite big, but as soon as I reveal this background options, you can see the height is getting reduced and width is no longer a match pair. And title is coming beside the view. So how do we are getting all these things? So we are doing all sort of things using the scene file. And that's where motion layout comes into action. Let's see the motion file. So here, because I want the transition to get started as soon as I tap on an icon, so that's where I have specified on click of the IV menu. Now one thing here, I do not want to end the transition once I tap on it, which means that I do not want to have this transition to the end, which will uh, eventually make me to like tap on the icon, reveal the options, but it will never close it. So I do not want such things. What do I want is like a toggle. So if I tap on it, open it. If I tap once again, close the options. And that's where click action toggles is really helpful. Here you do not specify start and end of the animation. Because you have already specified the start and end, the transition, it automatically understands this. Once you tap, take to the start. And once you tap it after that, then take to the end. So by this way, you're talking between the animation. And the duration for this animation is 500 milliseconds. So this was all about the transition. Now all important work is done in this constraint set. So we just have two constraints set, start and end. 
Start is a constraint set which you see as soon as you launch this screen. And that's where you can see that we have this foreground view which is nothing but this white color view with the rounded shape on top. It's aligned like top to the bottom of TV titles just below the title. And the flower which you are seeing like this flower in the center which is having width as match constraint height as 180 dp. This is aligned right with this foreground view. After that, the title and info is forwarded off along with this image. And one important thing is that once you tab on this, you see that it is getting rotated to 180 degree. And once I tab it back, it's again moving back to zero degree. It's been defined here. That initially stick to zero degree and later on switch to 180 again when coming back to start go back to rotation to zero now let's see where do we end up so this constraint set is going to give us this look and this end constraint set is going to give us this look for our view so now you can see that this foreground view is no longer top to the bottom of title rather it's top to the bottom of this chips so by this way it is accommodating the space to show chips and coming right below it also the flower flower is like no longer occupying the entire width so this is like start to the end of the title and to bring title to the center of this image it's been aligned as top to the top of flower bottom to the bottom flower and start the start of parent same way info that remains same just uh, earlier it was bottom to the title now it is bottom to the image view so that it is coming right after the image finally the rotation of 180 degree that's where we are rotating to 180 degree as soon as we end this animation to the start goes to zero to the end come back to 180 degree so this was all about getting this kind of animation using motion layout. So I hope this might be useful for you to understand about when to use backdrop, how to use backdrop and how to get all these things using the motion layout. If you have liked this video then hit the like button and subscribe the channel and please do not forget to share it with your friends. Thank you and stay tuned for the upcoming videos.